So one of the most important things you're going to want to teach your dog is how to stay. It's really important to form that at an early age with a real positive association. We teach it through a calm interaction with us. We don't want to yank the dog around much. We don't want to do too much pressure on the dog. And to do it, it's really important to start with your puppy. So Dwayne is about 12 weeks old, so he hasn't really done this that much yet. So we're going to see what happens today. When you do this exercise, Dwayne, come here. What we really want to do is use something like a little platform. You can use a, uh, a like an apple box. You can use a, a little table or something like that. But you're, what you're trying to do is to get the dog to see a difference of materials. So in other words, him being up high is a different feeling than him being down low. So it's going to start to teach what we what we consider an implied stay. And we're going to get him up here. Dwayne, 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 come up here. Good boy, Dwayne, Dwayne. Up, up. Good boy. So we get him to sit. Good. Good sit. Good. Nope. And when he flops off of there, good. I, I pay him. I can go away from him. I can come back to him and pay him. Sit, Dwayne. Sit. Good. I can go away from him. I can come back to him. Now, I don't really use the word stay in obedience because I think if I teach the dog to sit, he should know stay. Some people like to put the secondary word of stay in. So just for the example here, I'm going to use the word stay today so you can see the difference. What I'm, what I'm trying to get the dog to is say, Dwayne, stay. No. Good. I come back and I pay him. What I don't do with the stay, and I've talked about this in other videos, is I don't call the dog out of the stay. So I don't do sit, stay, come, sit, stay, come, because the dog starts to read into the behavior that he should be coming after staying. So if I say stay, nope, Dwayne, Dwayne, good, sit, stay, and I go away. And now here, I've got a distraction coming into the picture because he's going to want to play with Jimmy, and he does play with Jimmy. Dwayne, nope, nope. I make it real easy, put him up there, sit, sit, stay. And I go away. Nope. Good. So I'm going to use the bridge word good that I always talk about to reinforce this behavior. Come back, go away. Come back, go away, stay come back. I can intermittently reward here so he sees that he's getting a reward for being in this position, but I've not really released him yet. I'm just feeding the good behavior. Stay. Now this might be a little bit far for him, but I'm going to let him try. You've got a big distraction with Jimmy in the picture. Good. Stay. I reinforce the stay. And the good thing with using a platform or something, it gives the dog the ability to relate to being in a stay even when he's getting up. He's, he's got this threshold that he can't get past, which is the edge of the platform. Stay. Nope. Nope. So no big corrections here. You don't want to start yanking the dogs and correcting them or yelling at them. It's a simple nope. And when he's back here and I go away, say, oh, that's no, sit. Good. So here, what is he getting? He's getting a positive reinforcement. He's getting his treat. He's getting my interaction. He's getting my praise and my attention. But when he gets off the platform, stay. Good. Good. I mark it, right? But when he comes off the platform, he doesn't get an interaction. He just gets a simple no and has to go back on to here. And I'm going to teach him a little pressure on this leash. So I'm going to say stay and I'm going to put some negative pressure here which should, in theory, make him want to come to me. But by putting that pressure on him, when it's a clear picture here, it actually stay. It teaches him to, nope. It teaches him to pull back. See, if you can see it slightly, he's actually pulling back into sit. When I say stay, stay, oh, that's a good boy. Don't pop the leash, simply stay. Put tension in the leash and pull slightly. And you can see he's actually sitting at stay, good, stay, good.
good. You can see it with my hand, there's tension. Good stay. Yeah, that's a very, very good boy. Very good Duanimator. And we're just gonna give Jimmy some cheese as a reward because he's a sopping wet mess from drooling. Do this in real short durations with your dog. Don't go too far or too long. This session is really at his limit where he's, where he's kind of breaking down. But I can see he's still focused, he's still paying attention, he's still making a lot of eye contact. Good boy. Don't call him from here. Each time I release him, yes. So when we're teaching our dog to stay, we want to keep the duration short. We don't want to do more than five to 10 minutes on that exercise. We want to end it with a big party, with a lot of treats, a lot of fun. And we want to keep it positive because remember, we're just teaching Dwayne to stay now. We don't want negative associations with it. So if you start putting heavy corrections on the dog for this, or start putting um, aversive corrections or, or uh, techniques on the dog for this, he's going to hate it. And the main thing you want to do in particular with a puppy and a dog that's not obstinate, if you have a really um, aggressive dog or really dangerous dog that's having issues, I have no problem putting some compulsion on the dog or some corrections on the dog. But when you're working with a puppy or a really nice dog like Jimmy or something like that, corrections are really not going to be necessary. Your correction is going to be your voice, it's going to be the no, it's going to be this or that, but there's no sense in putting really heavy head and corrections on a dog because you're shaping a behavior, you're creating a behavior, and you're, you're teaching the dog how to learn what you're trying to teach him. So keep it short, keep it fun, and have a lot of fun with your dog. Right, Jimmy? Right? Good boy. Have fun. That's another edition of Train with Dwayne, the Dwayne-a-mater.